Hey there, this is a response to The Dentist 27 that was responding to my response to James on Marxism. Um, he's touched on a few points that I just want to address right here and do it kind of quickly. Um, the first thing is, I think he's a little too quick to judge my title. Um, he starts off by saying I'm seeing this in sort of binary sort of way by saying I am not a Marxist. Um, but I'm not a Marxist. I don't think I'm reinforcing any false dichotomies by doing this. And I explicitly said that Marx was a great humanitarian. But basically his theories are useless in terms of economic theory. Uh, there is no part of that that I think is really reinforcing any Cold War ideas. Um, also, I was hoping that would sort of, with James, open the discussion of what is a Marxist. Marx was in many cases, a philosopher, a historian, an economist, a humanitarian, as I said. And I think we have to ask ourselves, like, what part of that makes them a Marxist? I'd always envisioned it that it being the historical vision of uh, the rise of the proletariat made you a Marxist. But maybe you can be like a humanitarian Marxist, but a... Um, even maybe a free will economist. I, who knows? I don't know what the rules are. Um, you say I'm not contradicting Marx, but rather expanding on some of his ideas by offering this um, subjective theory of value. Well, no, I'm, I'm definitely contradicting him um, and doing it pretty forcefully, actually. Marx is after equality, and I want to ask the question, equality of what? Um, all political systems view themselves as being egalitarian in some sense. Um, even very conservative visions of, like, even libertarians would consider themselves egalitarian, but believe that equality of opportunity is more important than equality of outcome. Um, I contradict Marx because I'm saying at the core of his system of value, which gives you equality and fairness, and even the conception of capitalism that he's railing against, something important is being missed, namely that people have different needs and different beliefs on what is equal. Um, you say at one point, if you have a, a high tax system, then you don't need centralized government. You don't see the connection here. Um, the connection is that even with a high tax system, you would need some sort of centralized government in order to collect those taxes. And I would argue that the goal as well, like separate from just that, the goal shouldn't be simply to have high taxes for high taxes sake. Um, you want to have high taxes or taxes in certain areas of the economy to balance it out. I believe in centralized government in the following sense, and this is really a sort of Keynesian sense, which would mean that governments should intervene from to keep the market from crashing um, by taxing the most wealthy and spending it on some sort of public services. But argue further that there is good economic spending and there is bad economic spending. Um, the most effective forms of Keynesian spending are building on infrastructures, the things that would allow society to move forward. Actually, this is discussed uh, actually just this week in the issue of The Economist, which is talking about uh, the economic leviathan with its tentacly evil happening. Um, so this isn't coming even from uh, the socialist Marxist stream. This is from the very neoliberal versions of the political spectrum. Even they are seeing now, in light of the current economic crisis, that some form of Keynesianism is correct. Now, what forms are correct? Like I said, I think the most effective forms of Keynesian spending are building on infrastructure, things that would allow for future development. This could include in maybe the 1940s or 1930s when Keynes was beginning to be very influential. It would have meant the things like building telephone poles or roads or things like that. In the US and Canada now, one of the main areas would be um, education. And this comes back to actually the theory of value. Um, the systems of education and energy services, those sorts of things, allow further development, but they also allow more of an equality of opportunity. So I think that is a more equal system than even the one that 
um, Marx or the one that we contemporary that we live in contemporary society are really offering. By offering better education systems, we not only make it so certain people can only go so high. There's only a certain level by under which you can be uh, you can go before we start taxing you. But also, we're bringing up the bottom by allowing people better opportunities and allowing them to sort of work for themselves. In the U.S., and like I work at a university, I know firsthand some of this stuff, that um, the economic cost of university prevents a lot of people from moving out of their social circumstance. And basically, education is one of the few things that benefits everybody. By giving education to people at a lower cost, we allow the entire society to move up. And that's basically the sort of Keynesian approach that I would take. So again, we're not taxing people for the sake of taxing them. Rather, we're trying to tax them in certain periods to allow for better equality and better opportunities. It's to that end that we see these systems as good, not for their own sake. Anyways, thank you very much for the response. I look forward to any comments you might have.